Did you know that on average, people with social anxiety disorder take 10 years before they reach out for help and get some kind of treatment? Hey, my name is Sebastian van Schier. I'm a former social anxiety disorder sufferer, social confidence coach. And in this video, I'm going to go over the 10 reasons for why people wait for so long to reach out for help. And then I'm going to give you a simple do-it-yourself from home opportunity to start reducing your social anxiety very fast. Now I'm bringing this to your attention because it's a real problem to wait that long because unfortunately social anxiety doesn't go away on its own. And in fact, it tends to get worse the longer you wait to actually do something about it because you'll end up avoiding more, you'll end up shrinking your life, it leads to more loneliness, um, things in your life become more and more difficult to handle and to manage as the anxiety uh, gets out of the control. It exacerbates your lowered self-esteem as a result of the challenges that you're dealing with, you're judging yourself more, and the outside world just becomes more and more scary. So that's what we don't want. But before we get to the solution, let's first look at why is it that we're not reaching out for help quickly? Okay, so there are 10 reasons for that. Let's go over them rapid fire. Number one, social stigma. Pretty much all people with social anxiety feel ashamed of the fact that they're dealing with it and they judge themselves as weak and inferior and reaching out to someone else for help, that is something that's that they want to avoid. They, want, they don't want to have that label, let alone if someone else knows about it. So that's number one. Number two, fear of negative judgment. They imagine that if they were to reach out for help, that their therapist might even be judging them. But especially if other people know that they're getting help for something like this. And so that also stops them. Number three, it's not that bad. In order to not feel too bad about the problem, um, you can minimize it and think, well, lots of people have uh, problems with this and it's not that bad. Yeah, I can't be in this situation, I can't be in that situation, I'm missing out on this, I'm missing out on that, I can't be myself here, but, but that's just, it's, it's not too bad. Well, that kind of reasoning, while it is intended to help you feel less bad, which is good, it also causes you to not reach out. As they say, pain is a very good motivator. And I'm not saying you should constantly, you know, be hard on yourself, but you do want to look reality in the face and say, hey, this is so limiting me that it's unacceptable. I have to do something about it now, because that's actually what will cause you to take action. Then once you're taking action, you will start feeling better. However, reason number four for not reaching out, stopping that, believing that it's just part of your personality or your character. More than 50% of people uh, suffer from social anxiety disorder for as long as they can remember from since they're little. Well, when you've been suffering for that long, it feels like it's part of you, like it's who you are. Yeah, I'm just awkward in those situations. Yeah, I just feel anxious. That's me, that's who I am. It feels as normal as the color of their skin or the, the color of their eyes, but it's not who you are. It's not what you're born with. Nobody, no, you know, look at little kids. Are they anxious? They might be a bit shy sometimes, but Look at little kids, there's no social anxiety disorder. It is a learned issue. And even if you've had it from really early on, it still can be resolved. It's not something that's part of your personality. It's not who you are. It's something you have and something you can overcome. Reason number five, doubt about the effectiveness of treatment. Now this one I can really understand because mainstream treatment for social anxiety disorder isn't that effective. Yes, it is effective in terms of it can reduce the symptoms. However, it's not effective in getting rid of the symptoms completely. And what is uh, the number one thing that is being promoted is exposure therapy. Well, that has lots of negative consequences. And one of them being that it's very, very difficult to do. And there are lots of other um, 
things that are challenging about it that I won't go into, but yes, I can understand that. However, there are other exciting treatments available like tapping with which you can actually overcome your social anxiety disorder completely. However, there are other exciting treatments available that are scientifically proven to be effective for anxiety, PTSD, test anxiety, public speaking anxiety that are very effective for addressing social anxiety, like tapping. Reason for not seeking help number six, fear of the unknown. Now, people often don't know what's going to happen and what treatment really means. Well, of course, it depends on what kind of treatment. But when we're talking about using EFT tapping for social anxiety, that kind of treatment happens predominantly from the comfort of your own home. So what it looks like is you're actually watching a video or following along with something online, either anonymously or not, and, or you're tapping with a practitioner and you're just doing that. So you're in the comfort of your own home, you're talking about certain issues that are challenging to you that are triggering the anxiety and through the tapping you're bit by bit releasing and letting go of them and you're letting go of them in the comfort of your own home say you have a fear of rejection you first get rid of the bulk or all of that fear of rejection and you keep living your life and you go through these experiences that formerly used to incredibly scare you and trigger you and make you feel inferior and worthless and so on. And, these, and you'll then find after the tapping that these feelings are simply not there anymore. Amazing. And then it's easy to get a real life experience that, hey, I can handle those situations now. You start to include these situations in your comfort zone, which expands your life quality. And now you can start to build the kind of life and social life that you do want to have. Reason number seven, lack of motivation. One of the big problems with social anxiety is that it is such a debilitating problem that leads to lots of overwhelm because life can be difficult in and of itself to deal with. And if on top of that, you're also struggling with significant social anxiety, that can just drain you. Avoiding social situations and when you're in a social situation, it draining you, it exhausting you, worrying about upcoming social situations, constantly worrying, am I gonna get anxious? Are they gonna see it? How am I gonna get rid of this problem? What do they think of me? Like it's a constant barrage internally that leads to lots of overwhelm and it zaps your life energy. As a result of that, it might be too much to also reach out and think like, well, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be overwhelming to do all of this, but that's actually not the case. And this feeling of overwhelm is something that you will address with the tapping and that starts to relieve and you know the things that are bothering you so much start to decrease and actually it all just becomes a lot easier once you get going. It is that first step of taking action, of saying, hey, I'm going to do this no matter what, right now I'm gonna take action. That is what will set you on the path towards the social life and the relationships and the career and the satisfaction that you want from life. Reason number eight, fear of losing control of your identity or behavior. Now we're people set in our ways we see ourselves in a particular way, we are used to the habits that we're used to, and so any kind of change that you want to embark on, even though, of course, social ease, who, who doesn't want that when you're feeling socially anxious? Yes, definitely. But often there's a part of you, it's like, well, this is actually part of who I am, and who am I gonna be without this problem? How am I gonna behave? How are people going to treat me then? What am I going to do with my life? Um, how am I all of a sudden going to change things? And all of these worries and concerns are going to come up. And that then stops you from actually, well, let's just stick with what's familiar. It sucks. It's difficult. But at least it's the stuff that I'm in control of. And at least it's the stuff that I know. Now, all of these fears, all of these worries are simple tapping targets that you can release and let go of often as quickly as two minutes. And what might be reassuring for you to know is that 
you're not going to change into a different person. With tapping, what you're doing is you're getting rid of the programming, the old uh, stuck emotions from your past, the old perspectives that are stuck. And as a result, you start to feel more and more safe to be your true authentic self. So you're not turning into somebody else. No, the transformation is feeling safe and comfortable being who you really are around others. Reason number nine, lack of social support. Now, social anxiety is a problem that most people feel very ashamed of. And for most people, it's their biggest secret. So nobody knows about them. You know, um, I've been working with clients for 13 years. The vast majority tells me that either only their partner or only one confidant knows, or maybe a previous therapist or something, but typically nobody knows. And so there's not that social support that tells you, it's like, hey, you know, there are solutions for this. Um, why don't you go and get some help and assistance for that? Well, let me be that person. There is amazing help out there for you. And tapping is incredibly effective to address and tackle this problem in a gentle and effective manner. So here's your social support. And finally, here's reason number 10, fear of exposure therapy or painful past therapy experiences. Now, and I can really understand this one because if you've tried a bunch of things that were supposed to work and they don't work, that is really um, disheartening because it gets you to feel like, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. I'm broken. My brain is just beyond help. And this is just what I'll have to deal with for the rest of my life. Every time you try something again and yet again it doesn't work, you get less and less hope and you become more and more skeptical that anything can actually work for you. Most people that come to me, they're like, nothing works for me, I've tried everything and I'm the toughest case you'll ever meet. You know, <laughs> This is pretty much what most people say. And yet, while I understand what it is that they're saying, even the logic doesn't add up because just because you've tried a particular approach that didn't work, that doesn't mean that other approaches also won't work. Some people say, well, I've tried tapping. I'm like, yes, but um, you're not exactly a tapping legend. You know, you're not a pro, you're not a professional. And some people say, well, I've worked with a professional. Okay, but was that person experienced in helping people with social anxiety disorder and did they have a track record of success? If not, it might just be that your well-intentioned practitioner simply wasn't skilled in helping you. That doesn't mean that tapping doesn't work. And if you self-applied and it didn't work for you, it doesn't mean that tapping doesn't work. It simply means that that particular approach and strategy doesn't work. Don't scrape tapping off of the map or working with a practitioner off the map. Find a different uh, a practitioner, try different things. Do not give up. There's lots of things that could potentially work. And one of the things that is highly likely to work is what I've got coming up for you, which is the free seven day social confidence challenge, which is totally brand new, all from the comfort of your own home. And what is it? Well, every day you get one email and one 10 minute video, 10, 15 minutes. And each video that you get is me guiding you through a particular tapping routine, tapping strategy in order to minimize your suffering, boost your self-compassion and self-acceptance and start reducing your social anxiety all within seven days. I know it's hard to believe, but this is something I've specialized in since I'm 17, I'm 38 right now. Um, I only discovered tapping once I was 22, 23 perhaps, you know, but I started coaching people when I was 25. I was a 25 year old social confidence coach, right? Um, but I've learned a lot of things since. I've coached hundreds of uh, socially anxious clients. I run an online community for the past four years where I do group coaching, where I demonstrate 
in front of everyone on the call, this particular person. And my question is, all right, what's your biggest social anxiety issue? And I help that person resolve that issue in front of everyone. So I have seen the problem presented and I've experienced it myself, I had to overcome it myself. I know what works, you know, I've been, I've been observing this and I've been guiding people through this over and over and over. So I know what consistently works and what consistently brings about shifts for people. I combine the best of traditional psychology with the tapping and that allows for things to shift even when nothing else has worked before. So that's all for free. So join the free seven day social confidence challenge by going to bit.ly forward slash social confidence challenge. That is bit.ly forward slash social confidence challenge. Now, I'm not gonna offer that seven day challenge for free for long. That's not false scarcity. It's gonna turn into a paid program. But, you know, I wanna get people's feedback before I turn it into a paid program or get it off of the market to do it another time, but only next year. So this is a, a, a unique opportunity. We're going to start on the 21st of March. It's gonna run for seven days. When you complete the challenge, you get to keep the challenge for free. You don't do all the seven days, you lose the challenge. Okay, this is because I've done challenges in the past before and then people sign up for it and they're like, oh, I'll do it one day. No, you either do it or you don't do it and then you lose it and then you have to pay for it or wait for another year. So if you want to, and I'm not doing this to be mean, right? But you want to actually take action, just consuming information and getting a little boost like, oh, you know, nice, maybe one day I'll do this. No, that's not gonna work. The only way to get over your social anxiety is to actually take action. And I'm not talking about going outside and forcing yourself to high five strangers, plank in public and all of those kinds of exposures. Those can be helpful, but those are so much easier when you actually use the tapping. No, when I say take action, it's like sign up, open the email, click on the video, follow along with my tapping and notice how your emotions are beginning to shift and you start feeling better, less anxious, more calm, more self-compassionate, more self-confident, more at ease with yourself, nicer to yourself, and that's what you're after. So come join us, go to bit.ly forward slash social confidence challenge. See you there.